All right. So let's talk some Nigerian women's football. On today's roster, we got Honor Man B making a return to the NWFL. Falconers third round opponents in their under 20 World Cup qualifiers. And we'll also take a look at the results of the UEFA Women's Champions League draw, which took place today. Before we get into these stories though, please don't forget to like this video and also subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thank you very much. So first we're going to start with Honor Mad B and a few days ago it was announced by Nigerian Women's Football League Club Niger Rattles that she would be joining and it was earlier announced like last month. They put like an uh, announcement coming soon post on their Facebook page. But that announcement didn't come so soon. It came like five days ago. They announced on a man joining the team. And some things that came out with it. First of all, the length of the contract. We don't know how long she's going to be there. Well, I don't know how long she's going to be there. She obviously knows because she signed the contract. But that wasn't put out. But we do know that she's going to be making 1.5 million naira a month. Which is not that bad. I mean, you're competing with NPFL players at this point and she's also gonna be getting some land from the club so that's pretty cool right there now when it comes to Nigel Rattel they're a club based in Abuja they were in the Nigerian Women's Football League last season they finished fourth not a poor club not a bad defense in my opinion they were real good for some time they had one of the highest goal scorers in the league for a period if i'm not mistaken and even their fourth place finish when you look at the teams they were above them you got delta queens by elsa queens rivers angels that's not bad right there to finish fourth place and they got a whole bunch of young players i believe bankole alowa carried the coach for the under 17s last time i believe he might still be the head coach of Nigel Rattels so they're not a poor side they're a good side and they're getting a player that has been there done that a great role model a leader on and off the pitch and I feel like this could be a match made in heaven I mean first of all you got a player like Faye Omilana the goalkeeper over there you get to play with one of the all-time greatest defenders in Nigerian history and this is a player that yes she's going at the twilight of a career but she can still teach that young goalkeeper a whole bunch of things she can get her right in this little moment and you could just look at the roster there's a whole bunch of young players and you get a player like this that can lead them that can help them and i feel like this could be a real blessing for him right here it could be a real good deal by the end of the season but the truth of the matter is it's a big deal it's probably she's probably the highest earning player in the league and people are gonna want her to prove it you're not just gonna get an easy ride because you're on a man b they're definitely gonna want you to prove it they definitely want to see the improvements in this side and the season starts next month preseason there's gonna be a preseason tournament that Nigel Rattels are in and it starts in a couple of days so I don't know if she's gonna be playing in that I mean we have heard the talk about retirement a lot of people have come out saying she should retire saying she should not be part of the Super Falcon squad and I feel like that right there is like a personal decision because you don't know how her body works you don't know how she feels when she gets out of bed in the morning you don't know any of that you're just guessing because she's at a certain age you feel like she should not be there anymore the fact of the matter is if she can still perform if the coach still feels like this a player i can count on i mean there's nothing you can say that's it right there because i don't feel i don't feel like you need to put down a player for doing the right thing taking care of her body living right eating right not putting certain stuff in her body you know it doesn't come by luck you don't just get to that age and still be in shape just by luck you have to keep the work up and i feel like that's what she's doing so this might just be a once in a lifetime type thing because a lot of people don't have that discipline a lot of people don't have that patience to keep on keeping on at that certain age so i mean instead of complimenting her for what she's doing you're turning it into a situation where you're saying that she's making the nff selector and that's wrong it's not right you're putting you're putting her in a in a spot right now because you're trying to say that she's doing something wrong to get on the team instead of just being on merit and you don't have any evidence if you had the evidence then that's i mean it is what it is but without the evidence it's just wrong it's bullying 
and i feel like that's wrong and that's why i'm speaking on it right there but we're gonna be moving on and we're gonna be talking about the falconess the falconess last time we talked about the falconess mauritius pulled out of their two-legged affair they were supposed to be getting it on for the fifa under 20 world cup qualifiers but mauritius was like no they're not playing and now we know the opponents for the next round tanzania i'm pretty sure they're not gonna be pulling out they played Djibouti in the last round 5-0 first leg second leg 7-0 12-0 finishing they spell Djibouti and more and that's crazy right there but the Falconers will be playing Tanzania first leg from the 10th to 12th of November this year of course then the second leg 17th to 19th of November any day between one of those days and I'm guessing as we get closer we'll know the exact date but just know it's between those days in that week right there's gonna be a week between the games and yeah Falcon is going to be playing Tanzania. Tanzania, really tough side. Should definitely not be underrated by anybody. Anybody. This is the same side from the under-17s not too long ago. It was two African sides in the second round that moved on in the competition. It was the Flamingos and Tanzania under-17. They lost to Colombia in the round of 16. We lost to Colombia in the semifinal. So it's definitely... A team that we should not just disregard because they're not a poor team they're a strong side i'm guessing most of those players are going to be moving on to the under 17 so this is going to be a tough affair i mean the coach has been in tough situations like this the last qualifiers he went up against cameroon and i believe south africa in the next round so he's used to situations like this although i'm not too sure he has had a team pull out like mauritius did and that could come back to bite the falconers even though they had nothing to do with that because you're going to be missing two matches and you're also going to be missing the training camp that you would have had with the players so that right there is a setback you're going to be playing a team that has already gone in motion with their situation they've already played some qualification matches and they've definitely been in camp together building chemistry with each other so that kind of gives Tanzania a leg up going into this two-legged tie Tanzania is going to be real real tough but hopefully the Falcon can get past that and move on to the next round of the qualifiers and moving on last but definitely not least we're going to talk about the draw for the UEFA Women's Champions League we had Super Falcons players in five of the 16 teams competing in the group stage and crazily three of those teams ended up in the same group and that's crazy right there the first group group a barcelona of course i see Soto schwala at barcelona not that much playing time so far this season don't know what's up with that looks like the coach is trying out another player in a position but we'll just see how it goes they've tried this like the last two seasons and she ended up being the top scorer I'm not taking that away because I'm pretty sure that's probably what's going to happen this season. But we'll wait and see. And moving on, next up, we got Rosengard, Sweden. And that's a club of Super Falcons midfielder Holly Matu Allende. She was injured in the last round of qualifiers, but the team got the job done pretty easily. And next up, you got Benfica. Of course, they got Super Falcons midfielder Christy Uchebe. And they're going to be alongside Eintracht Frankfurt of of Germany and those are the teams in group A tough group right there of course Barcelona is gonna be getting out of the group then that last spot is gonna be between those three teams right there it's gonna be real tough and this group right here I don't know if it's group A but this was the same group these three teams were in last season Barcelona Rosengard and Benfica so that's crazy that they're in the same group once again I don't know what UF are using to do the draw but that's crazy right there then the next Super Falcons player we see is gonna be in group C and that's gonna be Nicole Payne and PSG it's not made a debut for the team competitive debut she's played in friendly matches of course we've seen the highlights on the channel but she's not made a competitive debut and they're gonna be alongside Bayern, Roma and Ajax so that's gonna be a tough group also i feel like anybody can get it but psg to me is the team that i feel like can really get up out that group 
then you got the next super falcons player of course we've seen a lot of her in this process and that's chama canado zay and paris fc they're gonna be in group d alongside chelsea real madrid and hacking of sweden and in my opinion a real tough group on paper but we've seen what psg has done against some really really tough sides so i'm i said psg paris fc i apologize what they have done against some really really tough sides so i don't know i don't think that this is such a tough group i feel like they could really go in there and do the business if they keep on improving and keep on putting in the work because if you saw what i saw against arsenal and wolfsburg i don't think chelsea and real madrid really know what's gonna hit them because paris fc looks like a proper proper side they're gonna give a lot of people problems in the in the french league leon i know that's like their property but they gonna have to share this season it looks like because paris fc is looking real good yeah the depth of their team do they have good substitutes that can come in later on in games or they can play full matches with injuries and things like that but i feel like paris fc is a team that people are gonna really really be surprised about this season but that being said let me know your thoughts on these groups right here let me know your thoughts on the under 20s playing tanzania and of course the mega deal okay not mega deal the deal for honor man b with the nigeria women's football league club niger rattles let me know your thoughts on that right there put it in the comment section and please don't forget to like and subscribe thank y'all for watching Peace.